What's up my YouTube friends? Today we're gonna to be doing a look inside video on my SVS SB3000. This is one of the most requested subwoofers that I get asked to do a look inside video on. I don't know what it is about this subwoofer, but it seems like a lot of you guys are interested in it. So today we're gonna to go over the TS parameters of the driver. We're gonna be looking at the build quality of the cabinet. And then we're gonna take a look at the amplifier. So if you've ever wondered what $1,200 buys you at SVS, then sit back, relax, and I'll try and entertain you for these next few minutes. So let's get started. Oh, I almost forgot one thing. Hang on. Oh, jeez. Woo. This is a driver from an SVS SB3000. Now don't cheat, but I'd like you guys to guess on how much you think this driver weighs by leaving a comment down below. Ooh, I'm gonna give you a little hint. Guess high, really high. So let's get started with the teardown. I'm gonna start off with removing the amplifier first, so that way when I pull the amplifier out, I could have some leverage by pushing down on the back of the subwoofer to kind of force it out instead of trying to pry it up. You know, this subwoofer is so heavy, I think I'd do more damage to the cabinet by trying to pry it out with any type of plastic pry tools. So I, I just don't wanna risk that. So I'm gonna start off with removing the amplifier first. The amplifier is held in by 10 number two wood screws. The amplifier was extremely easy to remove and once I had all the screws removed, all I had to do was detach the wires to the subwoofer and it came right out. Here's a quick shot of the back side of the cabinet after removing the amplifier. Now I have easy access to the back side of the driver, so hopefully it will come out without a fuss. We will see. The driver on the SB3000 is held in by eight number two screws. These screws are threaded through the speaker driver's frame, and SVS has also embedded T-nuts on the back side of the front baffle for additional added strength. What I'm trying to say here is that SVS just didn't take a gigantic and heavy driver and screw it directly into the MDF with wood screws. They took the additional steps to make sure that this driver wasn't going anywhere once it was mounted. Nice job, SVS. There was a lot more footage than this of me trying to remove the driver, but I didn't want to bore you with it. Simply put, removing the driver was a bit time consuming, but not difficult. The reason for this is SVS did such a great job of making sure things were sealed tight and wouldn't rattle. The downfall of building things really well often means servicing can take a little more time than usual, which I have no problem with. As you can see, I tried pushing on the back side of the driver, hoping the driver would fall right out, but it didn't. So I decided to elevate the subwoofer off the ground by a few inches with 2x4s. Then I used microfiber cloths on top of the 2x4s to protect the finish. Next I grabbed an old 2x4 and a rubber mallet and then gently tapped on the back side of the motor of the driver and then it fell right out. There we go. Now that the driver is loose, I can gently lift the cabinet off of the driver and move it out of the way. I'm going to be honest, I'm a bit anxious to see what this driver looks like and how it measures on my bench. Alright, I'm just going to come out and say it. The driver in the SB3000 is pretty sweet for this price point. The driver contains a lot of tech and quality materials that you normally don't see in this price category. For starters, this driver has a vented aluminum cone, die cast aluminum basket, split wind voice coil which I'll talk more about later, dual ferrite magnets, vented cone coupler, a vented spider to help keep the voice coil cool, and a 24 strand silver plated Litz lead wires which are then woven through the 6.5 inch 2 ply Nomax composite spider. A lot of the subwoofers that I have reviewed around the $1200 price point are your typical stamp steel basket variety with a vented pole piece and a large ferrite magnet. The SB3000 is not that stereotype. The split wind voice coil in the SB3000 has this subwoofer above the rest and here's why. 
So what is a split wind voice coil? What this means is that instead of the coil being wound in a uniform layering around the former, the coil winding has thicker density outside of its rest position within the gap, which is the place where the permanent magnet's force is focused. By having thicker density outside of its rest position means that it can help maintain more linearity across higher excursions. Whereas on a uniform layering voice coil, the rest position is the point of greatest magnetic strength. And the further the coil moves away from the rest position, the less magnetic force is exerted on the driver's diaphragm. Basically, the big benefit of a split wind voice coil is that there is more magnetic force available for high excursion frequencies, which equates to more bass that we can feel, which I think all of us here are big fans of. The only thing I can think of to improve this subwoofer would be for SVS to use the XBL2 motor technology because you do get lower inductance and lower moving mass with the XBL2 versus split wind. But the downfall is SVS would have to pay a licensing fee to utilize this technology, whereas split wind technology is now off patent and is royalty free. I don't know if the additional cost to license this technology would be beneficial to SVS and their mid-tier subwoofers. So who makes the drivers for SVS? Here's a picture of the outer box that my warranty replacement driver came in, and it clearly states that the supplier is Tenfany. The Tenfany brand, which is under the umbrella of Peerless, is a global leader in designing and manufacturing speaker drivers. This company has been in business since 1926, and they've been known to make some really nice drivers over the years. Here are the TS parameters of my SVS SB3000 driver. Since DATS doesn't provide me with the Efficiency Bandwidth Product, or EBP, I decided to manually calculate it. EBP is useful for determining if a driver is suited for a sealed or vented enclosure. A general rule of thumb is if EBP is less than 50, then the driver is more suited for a sealed enclosure. If EBP is between 50 and 100, then it can be used for either a sealed or ported enclosure. If EBP is greater than 100, then the driver is more suited for a ported enclosure. My SVS SB3000 driver has an EBP value of 57, which makes sense why SVS is using the same driver in both their SB and PB line. Now it's time to see how close you guys got to guessing the weight of this driver. 10, 20, or maybe even 30 pounds? I don't know, let's find out. If you were somewhere in between 20 and 30 pounds, then you were very close because this driver came in at 23 and a half pounds on my scale. Here it is, the Bear SVS SB3000 cabinet. So what does $1,200 get you in terms of cabinet construction? For starters, this front baffle is one and a half inches thick. That's pretty impressive. The center brace, 5 eighths of an inch thick. If we go around the back, this back cabinet wall is 3 quarters of an inch thick and I'm assuming the sides are as well. But take a look at this damping material inside here. I mean this isn't the cheap paper thin stuff. I mean this stuff is pretty thick and dense. And not only that, SVS took the time to actually staple it to the inside wall instead of gluing it. So let me pull down a little section here for you so you can get an idea of how dense this stuff is and how thick. I mean that is not cheap stuff man. This is good quality damping material inside here. And then this center brace ties all of the side walls together. And it also acts as a cradle for the driver's motor structure. And it fits right inside here really tight. As you guys saw when I was removing the driver from this cabinet, it was not easy. And then if we go to the back, you know, it's the same thing. We've got damping material on every single wall. And that damping material is stapled, it's not glued. Look at that beautiful gloss black finish. I've seen paint on German cars that aren't even this good. Get a lot of orange peel in it, you know? This stuff is just 
smooth as glass. It's like looking inside a mirror. And the crazy part is, this is not a brand new subwoofer, guys. I've had this for a little over two years. I think two and a half years now. And my cats have been jumping up and down on it. Right here. And all I do to maintain it, to keep it in this uh, nice glossy state, is I use automotive uh, wax on it to buff it. You know, maybe twice a year or so. So there you go, that's the uh, cabinet of the SVS SV3000. The SB3000 uses a Sledge STA800D2 amplifier to push the high excursion 13 inch driver. This is a Class D amplifier that is rated for 800 watts of RMS power and even includes an onboard DSP, which is very handy for dialing in the sound of this subwoofer to your room. The onboard DSP chip is made by Analog Devices and it has a 24 bit DAC with a sampling rate of 96 kHz. Here's the spec sheet for the ADAU 1761 DSP chip that SVS is using in these amplifiers. The DSP is controlled by a phone app and communicates with the subwoofer via Bluetooth. SVS is using a Qualcomm CSR1010 Bluetooth chip on the SP3000. This amplifier has a pretty decent count of filtering capacitors included on the board. These capacitors are made by JWCO. I'm not familiar with this brand of capacitor, but they seem to be made of decent quality and show no signs of bulging, even on my two and a half year old amplifier that has been used almost daily since I purchased it. Time will tell if they will hold up though, but I'm not too worried because my past experience with SVS has proven to me that they build a quality product. So why did my driver need replacing? It all started a few weeks ago when I was watching the movie Doom, which has a very bass heavy soundtrack, and I could tell something didn't sound quite right with my subwoofer. The subwoofer would make a rattling noise during heavy bass scenes. The rattling sound that was being made reminded me a lot of the sound a subwoofer makes when it bottoms out, but this couldn't be the case for me because the volume wasn't that loud, and the driver was nowhere near its X max. Here's a quick clip of the noise that my bad driver was making. As you can hear, the subwoofer was making some weird noises that weren't right, so I sent SVS's customer service team an email about the problem I was having. And two days later, a new replacement driver was on my front porch. This is one of the reasons why I continue to purchase from SVS, because when there is a problem, they always make it right. I have owned a lot of their subwoofers over the years, and this is the first one that I've owned that needed warranty work. Will this problem I had prevent me from buying another subwoofer from them? Absolutely not. Sometimes things break. It happens. But I will always sleep well knowing that if there is a problem, SVS will repair it. A lot of other brands could learn a lot from SVS's stellar customer service. And that's my look inside video of the SVS SB3000. Hopefully, this video will give you an idea of what $1,200 will buy you at SVS. In my opinion, this subwoofer offers tremendous value for money and is one of my favorite subwoofers in the sub $1,000 price category. You get a stellar driver, a powerful amplifier, DSP, and a great cabinet, all for as little as $1,100, depending, of course, on which finish you go with. I will talk more about how the SB3000 sounds in my review video, which I should have out in a few months. If I can get 200 likes on this video, then my next look inside video will be of my SVS SB16 Ultra. So long and happy listening.